when you're dealing with the stressful time is to have a little bit of humor with this. I, I have fun with what I do and helping people. So what is Mom's House social mission? What are we doing here today? Why are we on this call? Is that we're trying to help 10,000 daughter duties a month, 10,000. And we think we're just scratching the surface there. It could be 20, 30, 50,000 daughter duties a month that we can help, but that is our social mission. That is what Mom's House is doing. And so I wanna share with you guys a super quick case study video of how my business is today. I just sold this painting on Antiques Roadshow for a million dollars. No, I'm just kidding. I made $12,000 though in one hour in this house just this week. Hey, it's Philip with Mom's House. Today we're standing in the house where I just made $12,000 in one hour. And today we're gonna to do a case study. I wanna show you exactly how I did it. Sometimes people ask me, why is it called Mom's House? Well, the reason why is that that's whose house we're buying. We're buying Mom's House. And then people say, well, why is your logo cross stitch? Let me show you something. I'm in a house right now that I just bought this week. I, I got a chuckle out of it. Look at these two books that they have. Two books on cross stitch and then what's on the wall? Cross stitch. Did you guys know that the people's stuff is sometimes harder to get rid of than the house? And if you can get really good at helping them with all the stuff, you're gonna be a better home buyer. <laughs> so let's go over the numbers of the South 37th Street deal. I use a conservative ARV of 120,000, even though in today's market, it could easily be 130, 140, but stay conservative on your ARV. In St. Louis, I use 80 cents on the dollar minus repairs. So before I even drive across town, I know my offer's gonna be around 96,000 minus the repairs. When I'm there at the at the at the house, I estimated the repairs at 36,000. Be aggressive on that. Left me with a $60,000 offer. The seller uh, negotiated me up to 63,000. I said yes. Later that day, I sold it to my hedge fund for 75 grand. So in less than one hour, I made 12K profit. When you work in senior living, you're going to have leads that come to you every day, just like this. And why you'll buy so many houses is that if it's you versus the realtor, the realtor is going to, want, going to want them to clean this place out before they list the house. And that is where you, the as is cash buyer, have the advantage. Do you ever think there has to be a better way to do this real estate business? You may be wondering how I got a deal like this. Well, my financial planner friend called me up and said, Philip, I got another house for you. I've been working with him for over 10 years. He needed to get the house sold and the stuff. So I showed up with my senior living downsizing expert, my placement agent, and myself. And within a half hour, we had fixed all of the seller's needs. Sold the house, the stuff, and we got him into a safe place to live. You know, obviously you guys can tell I use a little bit of levity in everything that I do. And I think the idea with, you know, when you're dealing with the stressful time um, is to have a little bit of humor with this. I, I have fun with what I do and helping people. And you know, I, I hope that you can get to that point where in your life that, like Andrea said, it doesn't seem like work anymore. I, I thought that was pretty profound when she said that. I, I feel the same way. I love what I do for a living. I don't dread that it's Sunday night and I have to go back to work the next day. I, I look forward to helping all the families that I can. Um, our worst day as real estate investors, maybe we get a contract that falls through or maybe the cabinets aren't right when they show up. That's like our worst day in real estate investing. But in senior living, their worst days are literally life and death. Th their job is so much harder than ours. And so if you can be a, a trusted resource, they need you to help alleviate some of that stress for their families. And so right now I want to talk about, we won't go too deep into it because of time, but if you're a transactional person, I used to always have to say, you have to change, you have to change and be something else. But I realized that a leopard can't change his spots for very long. And so if you are a transactional real estate investor, maybe you have a big real estate investing business and you're sitting there listening to me going, Phil, this is great, but I don't have time to go build these relationships. I want to talk to you about the crock pot versus the vase. There's a vase out there in your market that's probably a social worker uh, or maybe they have a job title. They're known, liked and trusted already in senior living in your local market. It, you could hire to go build these relationships for you. And so I want to teach you about that as well. So you're not out if you're transactional. Maybe we just, just have someone else go build those relationships the right way. And so remember, the, the real estate agent uh, a lot of times isn't the best choice for these families. They don't live in town. They don't want the stress. They don't want to have to pay for it. They don't want what to do. They're trying to figure out what they're going to do with their parents. They're trying to spend time with their parent. When they're in town, the last thing they want to do is go try to do a rehab on the house when they should be spending their time with mom.